Who would have thought getting shocked by an electric eel would be the second most foolish thing I was going to do today? This is a Faraday glove. That is a Tesla coil. You ready? Kick it on. All right, Diana, we did the eel shock video. That was <laughs> awesome, but we wanted to come back for a little bit of bonus time with the cool experiments and the Van de Graaff machine that you brought with you. Can you tell us what is going on with the yeah. Van de Graaff machine? Yeah, this thing is really cool. Um, so inside here, there's a little belt. You can see it going around when you turn it on. I'm not gonna turn it on right now because we're looking really closely and we probably get shocked in the face. Uh, but that belt is rubbing against something in the bottom. Usually, usually it's like a brush. Okay. and the brush will scrape away on the belt and it'll build up charge on the belt. So if you've ever pulled off a coat before and you see sparks, that's the same kind of concept as what's happening here. You get the rubbing and that rips off electrons so that it, the belt gets charged up and then it deposits charge up here on this sphere. The cool thing about charge, they repel if they are the same kind of charge. So you're building up a bunch of positive charges. Okay. So when you do that, the charge spreads out. It doesn't like to be near each other. And then when I, or you, get your hand near it, yeah. it's like, ooh, jump to this. Immediately jump to that. Or if you start with your hands on it, it'll cover your body and it'll go into your hair and your hair has all the charges that don't want to be near each other, so it stands up. When you put your hand close, you can feel mm -hmm. there's something mm -hmm. jumping on you. Yeah, because not all of the charges are staying on here. Some of them are bleeding into the air, and that always happens when you have a really high voltage like this. We mentioned this is 350,000 volts. That, it, like, I know I said this in the main video, that just absolutely blows my mind. <laughs> Traditionally, when people hear about voltage, that's like our measure of electricity, but right, it's right. kind of like not even close to being the whole story. No, it's really not. I mean, you think about your wall outlet, that's 110 volts. Obviously a lot lower than this, so that's confusing for a lot of people. What's going on? Why would it be so much lower, but more dangerous? Right. Can you tell us a little bit about what makes electricity dangerous? Yeah, yeah. Why? What's the difference between a wall outlet versus something like this? It's the fact that you've got a, a higher current. So you've got more charges flowing. Think of it in terms of like a river current. If you had a huge current, it would sweep you away, right? Oh yeah. So if you have a huge current of electrical charges coming at you, it you know metaphorically sweeps you away and that it can actually hurt you. I would say there's probably four things to consider. You wanna consider how long is the shock happening. So with an outlet, it's gonna keep happening with the eel, and the generator, it's just a really quick one. You wanna think about the current, you wanna think about the voltage, and then you wanna think about whether it's a constant voltage. Let's give them a show, let's, let's get some yes. action. So when you touch it, go ahead and get your finger close. Ah, yeah. yeah. It'll start at 350,000 volts, but as soon as it sparks, it'll jump down immediately. By the arm. Wow, yeah. Okay, Woo. okay, <laughs> turn it off. Thank you so much, Diana, for teaching us about Electricity, if you haven't checked out Physics Girl on YouTube yet, I highly recommend it. Diana does all kinds of cool science experiments. You will learn a ton. And we are so appreciative for you coming on our channel. Thank that you very much. That was super fun, thank you. Now wait just a minute, everyone. We may be done with Diana's opportunity to get in some bonus zaps, but we still have one more shocking experiment to show you. Who would have thought getting shocked by an electric eel would be the second most foolish thing I was going to do today? This is a Faraday glove. That is a Tesla coil. I'm about to make some fireworks. You ready? Kick it on. Here we go. Thanks to Architect, we were able to get our hands on a Tesla coil and show you this amazing display of artificial lightning. That looks sweet. While the Van de Graaff generator creates static electricity, the Tesla coil creates high voltage AC. AC stands for alternating current, which means the electricity shown here will periodically reverse directions. This is the form that electric power takes when it comes out of your wall socket. And as we mentioned earlier, this is much more dangerous than the Van de Graaff generator. And therein lies the reason I'm wearing a Faraday glove. Faraday shields block electromagnetic fields by being covered in conductive material. So needless to say, without this glove, I'd be toast. If you wanna know more about what's going on with this device and why we had it here today making this video, Check out the link in the description below where I get shocked by an electric eel twice. I'm Mark Vins, be brave, stay wild. See you on the next adventure.
And now, for your listening pleasure, an ode to Tesla. Architect has spent countless hours discovering how to use a Tesla coil as an amplifier for music. When a note is played, a signal is routed to the coil, which triggers it to produce a current. Each note triggers a different electric frequency, which we can audibly hear. So when you play these notes consecutively, you have a song that's made purely from electricity.